Talking Army Football Podcast. Sal Internado here at the Army Football Club Social Friday night here with John Seymour. John is a 72, class 72, played wide receiver here for Army Day were Cadets. And, uh, John, just talk to me a little bit about your time here and what it was like to play football here. Well, it was uh, it was great. It was a lot of fun. I came came in. Uh, I was a walk on. I wasn't recruited and uh, tried out in uh, uh, the summer training and uh, made the freshman team. But that was no big deal because we had about 300 guys on the team and uh, there were probably 10 receivers. Uh, but played plead ball and we had a great senior class, class 69, that I was just telling Jim O'Toole about that uh, who was that class that we just admired those guys so much. And they were great examples for us. Okay, and um, so um, we had a, we had a, a, a extremely good uh, uh, fresh. Uh, varsity had a great freshman uh, rather season when we were freshmen. In our sophomore year, we were we were we had a so-so season. Junior year, we weren't happy with. We did not have a good season. We had a really tough schedule. Um, but uh, our senior year, we, we uh, weren't going to take it anymore. We got things turned around. We went six and four, and then our, our little brothers in class seventy three went six and four and beat Navy also. So we feel like we uh, you know we did right for Army football back then. We weren't going to let it uh, uh, continue to go down. It was getting very difficult to recruit back then uh, because of the Vietnam War. Um, and you know a lot when you when we compared what was in that class of sixty nine with our class, it, there was a huge difference. Now, we, we did have some great players, um, but it, 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 there was just a big difference and things were getting, getting pretty tough. So, uh, Do you have a favorite memory on the, on the field here as, as a player? Well, I would say uh, that, that's funny because my first start was because Joe Albano got hurt, class of 71. He, he was, his, we played a one receiver offense and he was the starter when I was a sophomore and I was, uh, work, I was playing behind him. Well, he got hurt, and so my first start was the next week against Notre Dame and Yankee Stadium. I was 19 years old, not recruited. So I would say that was a pretty, pretty good highlight. We didn't win the game. But I would say then, too, uh, Army-Navy game my senior year. Uh, just a, a tremendous memory, a great game. We jumped out on top of them, 16-0. And the next thing you know, we're fighting for our lives at the end of the game. And ended the game with Ron Hand, uh, Danhoff, the punter, uh, there were seven seconds left. We tried to get a first down coming out of our own end zone. The ball was on about the three, and it was fourth down. We had to punt. And so the coaches told Ron, just run around, in the, and the kid wasn't very fast. And so he got the ball, and he just ran to the right corner. We were in the middle of the field, right corner, and just sort of did a dance there until the clock ran out. And somehow they never got to him in time. But that, was, that was a great game. That was a great game. Sounds like, sounds like a lot of fun. Now talk to me about life after West Point and, and, and what was it like uh, maybe in military and uh, you came back here, right? Uh-huh, yeah. I, uh, I went into the infantry and uh, got married right away and we went to Germany and had a great three years. We just loved it over there. I loved the infantry. Uh, I came back and I went to uh, advanced course at Fort Benning and uh, uh, then to Fort Dix as a basic training company commander and just loved my Army time. Um, but at that point, about the seven-year mark, I, I was a real troop guy. I loved being with troops. And at that point, I looked at what majors did, and it looked like it, it was going to be another 10 years before I was ever around troops again. I was going to be going to schooling, schooling, staff work, and all this stuff. And uh, that didn't appeal to me, so I decided to get out. Well, had I not gotten out, I was supposed to come back for three years and coach. Um, I, I worked briefly in the civilian life and decided, you know, actually coaching isn't so bad and the Army's not so bad. And I got Homer Smith to see if he would bring me back. So Homer Smith brought me back and back on active duty, came back here in December of 78 and he had just been fired. So Lou Saban came in and said, see Martin, you graduated from here, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, you're going to be my recruiting coordinator. And so I said, well, that's great. What do I do? How do I do that? And so for the next six or so years, I was a recruiting coordinator through wow. the Ed Cavanaugh years, and then Jim Young, thank God, and then, uh, you know, in the first, we went to two bowl games, and then finally he gave me some relief, let me coach the receivers, and I was already coaching, but, uh, you know, the administrative yeah. uh, challenge of that, plus I was sort of the administrative coordinator for the whole office, and uh, so anyway, um, I uh, 
and he did that and then um, spent 16 years there coaching. Wow. Uh, because I was recruiting coordinator and we had a couple of coaching changes. Um, and they said, uh, Coach Young said, I can't lose this guy. We need him. I've just come in. We need the guy. And uh, can we get him here permanently? So I got assigned permanently to, to West Point, wow. which means I only retired as a major, but <laughs> because I wasn't competitive with my contemporaries yeah. anymore. But we had a great time. I raised three kids here and uh, had some great success on the field. And I know almost all these guys in this room right now. Yeah. That's a great brotherhood. No doubt. Um, I asked a lot of grads, what was when you're recruiting coordinator, it's a lot, it was a lot different. What was it like back then? Like, I mean, I'm sure Army recruited the whole country, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole country. We, we had... Uh, we, we really tried to cover all 50 states, and, and it was a lot of work. We would, we would start with 5,000 names, really, almost every year, 5,000 names. And by the next summer, that would be narrowed down to 100 guys. Wow. Wow. And, and it was a, just a lot of work, and we didn't have all the automation. And all of our mailings, we'd have the, the letters printed at the print plant. And stuff the envelopes and mail them outside. You had no electronic, of course, you know, communications. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was really intensive, very work intensive. That's like uh, all. I mean, the hours that you put in you, are countless, right? It I it almost cost me my marriage. Wow. Two. Wow. It was uh, and I, you know we had two kids at the time and uh, I was just giving everything I had to Army football. Yeah. And uh, the co- both the coach and the AD, you know, from time to time would say, John. Back off a little bit. It was, you know, we, we were all dedicated. Yeah. So it um, it was it was a challenge. But the, the great thing at that time was with the Vietnam War gone, the reputation of the military has been improving and improving. And the reputation of the academy, of course, was, was phenomenal. And it was really great recruiting kids. I never I remember Jack Hecker, my my old coach, mm-hmm. who just passed away. Um, we became closest to friends. I remember him telling me, oh, it really got rough. We would have parents to say, we don't want West Point on it. We want them coming into our home. Yes. I never ran into that, ever. I never had a bad experience in a home. By coaches, fact, uh, uh, teachers, anything like that. It was really special recruiting for this place. And we got some, just some really great special kids. Now you look at the program now and where it is. Can you talk to me as an alum, as a, as a former coach here? Did all, what's it like to see the, the program having a success it has the last few uh, years? It's, it's, it's really hard to even express. It's just, just great. And, and it all, it's all because of Coach Munkin and the support he got. You know, one of the great things, one of the reasons that Jim Young was so successful is because they had the right team of the superintendent, commandant, dean, and athletic director. And that's what Kaslin has, has given um, Coach Munkin here. Uh, but uh, that aside, the support aside, Coach Munkin has everything that we want here at West Point. He's tough. He doesn't, he doesn't accept anything but all-out effort and, and striving for perfection. And that's it. And no, just no mercy on the kids. And that's why Bobby Knight is such a great coach here. That's why any coach that comes in and tries to baby the kids and feels sorry for them, they're dead. And uh, that's why Jim Young is so good. And coaches like Bobby Knight, uh, Tom Cahill in his early years. Um, but co- but uh, just Coach Munkin just does it right. And he's got a just this attitude here uh, and air about the program. It is, I've never, I really never seen it. Uh, maybe in some of our bowl years earlier, but uh, I think it's. it's Things are even going better than when Jim Young was coaching. When they beat Navy to end the streak in 2016, is that where you think, okay, we're we're on the right path here? We're going. I mean, well, it was a successful season too. So. You know, as a former coach, I just, I just obviously, I, you know, I come back to spring games and, and we have season tickets, and I just, I just watch coach and I watch the kids respond, mm-hmm. and uh, and I just, I, I know what I'm looking at, I know what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing a guy who's who is uh, demanding, and uh, but he's also teaching. They're teaching great things out there. They're, they're playing solid football, and um, that's what it takes. Uh, but you know, and he, the thing about coaches that come to West Point, you can come in here, and it's so it can be so difficult to coach, it's so unique that that it gets to you. Um, and if it gets to you. You ought to just leave. Um, and he's the kind of coach that he accepts that. He accepts the the, uh, the, the tight places and, and the uh, 
the uh, what you have to go through to you know to succeed and run a program in the military, and uh, that's that's not slowing them down. He's, nope, he's, there's he's really no excuses with them, right? No, none. Nobody has any excuses. Ever. Like with Jim Lund, it was really difficult. It was difficult coaching for Jim Lund, just like it was. He was so demanding on the players. He was demanding on us, and you can see that in Jeff Munkins. You know, he he just expects excellence in everyone. He's got a good bunch around him. He's a really excellent coaches. They know their stuff. They're really running, playing smart football.